Hello, good people, and welcome back to Level Up Your ELO with Super Grandmaster Magnus Carlsen. No, I don't have him as a guest speaker. I meant we'll be studying one of his games, a classic one at that. Maybe when I get to as, as many subs as Gotham, maybe we'll have him as a guest speaker. But this game I'm talking about is a combination of dynamic strategy and sniper level tactical accuracy. Ooh. Are you guys ready to level up your ELO? Let's get it! So this game took place in a Wykenzie tournament in Netherlands at Chorus Group C. This is uh, 2004 and Magnus would just be, I believe, 13. And this is uh, Magnus at 2484 strength, just under 2500, but he's still brilliant as heck. Oh, before I begin, before I forget, if you do like this content, find it entertaining and it's helping you boost your ELO, please leave a like and sub if you haven't already. Uh, you have my gratitude. Let's get started. It starts with e4, c6 by the opponent, d4. No alien gambits today, kids. Uh, d5, undermining uh, the center. Knight to c3, not pushing, not the advanced variation. Takes and takes. And then bishop 2. One of the advantages of the Karokan compared to the French defense is the bishop gets to go out to the light squared bishop specifically. Knight to g3, attacking. And then h4, um, trying to tell the bishop where you want to go. And the usual variation is h6, tucking it away. Knight to f3. You'll notice uh, these guys are near or at, at Grandmaster strength, I am strength. So everything towards the center, quick development, things to take note about. And always, it doesn't matter uh, what level of play you're playing, you'll notice uh, that that is the, the usual opening modus uh, in any case. Knight to d7, h5, booting the bishop, also maximizing uh, territorial control there of the pawn, but this is the standard burn theory, basically. And now bishop to d3, uh, developing the bishop, also, you don't want it captured because after that queen to d3, and you don't have the right to castle on the king side, and I'm talking about black here, if you let white capture that. So simply just capture. Queen takes on d3, and now e6. You've gotten rid of that potentially bad bishop, and you have control of the center as black. As white, you've got both your bishops out, and you've got a nice territorial control there, eyeing uh, g6. Bishop to f4 now, developing the bishop. Knight to f6. Castle long by Carlsen, bishop to e7 by the opponent. Um, it's a pretty equal game, everyone's game. Knight to e4 by Carlsen, uh, putting the knight in the middle. If their pawn pushes here, now there's no knight obstructing it. Queen to a5, developing the queen to the fifth rank. Uh, as you'll notice, none of them move their queen by move 2, which is, yeah, very beginner-like. And we're threatening, of course, a1, so king to b1. Castle king by black. And the nature of opposite side castle is dynamism, dynamics, and violence. So you have to create play on the opposing side and counterplay immediately. Something to take note when you guys castle opposites and, and your, your chest is stronger. You guys might be stronger than me, but uh, if you're not quite... 2000 level just understand that castling here versus castling here means there's going to be blood in the board probably lots of it takes takes and then knight to e5 carlson just uh blocks the spawn from being attacked twice but also just centralizing the knight chess principles one to one put the knights in the center not in the rim Rook a to d8 pinning the queen potentially for pushes there so carlson unpins and here, c5 was played by black. Black fumbles just a little bit. Remember the part where I said, if you're playing on opposite side castles, you have to be creating threats, counter threats, creating territory, maybe a pawn storm. c5 is not a pawn storm. It tries to undermine the center, uh, but it does nothing in terms of threatening the, um, the white king on the queen side. A stronger move would have been immediately queen to b6, eyeing the b uh, file, and threats here. And then maybe knight here. 
So after queen to d3, preventing any shenanigans from happening there, then simply knight 2 g6, which is knight to d5. Sorry, knight to d5, hitting and with tempo, centralizing the knight. So you have to tuck back in. And now white is in defense mode. And now c5, trying to open up here, g3, trying to threaten here, as you can see, attack, defense, attack, defense, a little bit of fencing here, a little bit of uh, boxing. And that's not what black did, instead push c5, thinking that there might, uh, that he has time. And most of the time in chess, when it's opposite, ca ca opposite side castles, you don't have a lot of time. So Carlson uncorks the crazy knight to g6, just brilliant. The idea is to ruin the structure here, and with takes. And if you don't take it, well, your rook's being attacked, so you move. After takes, it's awkward, because after this exchange, d takes, this rook is being attacked. So you hit, takes, and takes. It looks good here, but the better move is simply rook 2, or rather bishop to e3, and after knight to d5, pin, and you're up one clean pawn. So the opponent didn't want that, and instead probably wondered, what is this 13-year-old up to? Is he the hype, or what is he? Well, he's a Magnus Carlsen, so takes, and Magnus took, and king sidesteps. And here, I know we can't all be like a 13-year-old Grandmaster level Magnus Carlsen, but there's something we can take away from his games, and this is one of them. After takes here, the average player, even strong player, uh, would probably consider taking and then, and then going here. Uh, but the creative player who understands the idea of isolating the king will do probably what Carlsen did, maybe not to the same depth of what he did, but here comes, not the sun, because that's a song, H takes on G6, delaying capture here, and a strategic dynamic opening up the H file. That's it, open up the H file. So that, after knight to G8, which is actually not the correct way to defend this, um, Stronger defense, which is simply uh, challenge the queen immediately. Get the queen out of there. After queen to b6, queen to queen, queen takes because it's being threatened. And now, and now, because you lost a piece, you defend your, your keep here. Uh, it's still very bad for white here, namely because this pawn on g6 is nagging. And after, say, queen to uh, e4, defending, defending, you're really, really cramped here uh, as... Uh, as black and this is coming and there's like still a cannon in front of you. Let's go back to the part where black didn't find that defensive resource. And that's one thing um, to take away. If you have a nagging threat and your king is um, being compromised, you should eliminate one of the greater threats of the position that can cause immediate checkmates or destroy your position. Here black fumbles with Knight to g8, defending, defending, because the position is too strong. Magnus sacrificed the bishop. Sacrifice one, takes, thinking you can still defend, but no, you can't. So, sacrifices the rook, and after that, finally takes. He's down material, Carlson. He's down actually two pieces of material. But the thing is, now the queen can't join the fray. And there's a mating threat in in uh, h7. That's h7, guys. And that's one of the lessons in tactical chess uh, is king safety. In here, even though black has uh, two extra pieces, the king is exposed to a checkmate. And yeah, it's it's so severe. The knight to f7 was played, offering the knight. And it looks like you want to check first, but the thing is you lose time that way. So Carlson takes on f7. It's so powerful to think that you're down one rook, but 
the king is lonesome in this square and in these files that, yeah, this is overwhelming. King to g7. And now Carlson plays rook to d3. Actually, a very strong move. First, you defend the square here. You have control of e8 and f8. And after rook to d6, everything's forced, and Carlson has seen it. Check first. You think you want to block, but then queen checks on e5. The king takes, but now forces again, because if you go to g7, you get laddered. Instead, Carlson finds, and of course calculated that after blocks, the opponent would try to save material and try to save himself just a simple bone crunching queen to d7 checkmate. So again, what can we take from the position uh, or the game is just one, Carlson is brilliant, but here, after castles, castles, uh, one thing to note, one important thing, and very important thing to note, it's a race against who we get to the king's throat faster, and you can't waste time. In chess, you can't waste time at all, but but here, like, the structure should be designed so that Whoever's move it is, it's to throw the pieces and um, attack the opposite side. And here, after takes, takes, pin. This was good. This was this was the way. This was the, the move. Threatening here, threatening with tempo, and it's a battle. And something to note. But after all that, the sack. Brilliant. Doesn't take. Knows that the king is doomed while this pawn is here. Anyways, the game ends in a checkmate. Hope you guys get something out of it. I'll see you guys later. Go Carlson. Double peace.